Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on filter design. For this video, I'm going to explain what is a resonant circuit. I'm also going to discuss the difference between series and parallel resonant circuits. This will be the part 8 series discussion. The earlier on series discussion on filter design, I have put the video link under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much, guys. Let's start off by discuss what is resonant circuit. The impedance of an RLC, resistor, inductor, and capacitor circuit, is a function of frequency. Okay, you can see from here, this is impedance versus frequency. Okay, you can see that basically the impedance change with frequency. Over here, you can see that this is a parallel resonator. This is a series resonator. Again, you can see from here is a function of frequency. So this is what you mean. The impedance is actually a function of frequency. For some circuit, the reactive part vanish at one or more frequency. Okay, which means that the reactive part, which is the, for example, the L and the C part, they actually disappeared okay, at one or many, many frequency. It depends on the situation. Okay, this condition, which is called a pure real impedance, which means that only the R assists all the imaginary term disappeared. This is what we call a resonant. And the frequency or frequency at which it occurs is called a resonant frequency. So when this pure real impedance, which means that all the imaginary all disappeared, okay, we call this resonant. Okay, and the frequency we call this at a resonant frequency. A circuit with one or more resonant frequency is said to be a resonant circuit. Okay, so this is a quick definition about resonant circuit. The resonant circuit is extensively used in communication system to separate one and unwanted signal. Okay, so this is what you mean. A resonant circuit, in fact, this is a one and unwanted. Okay, so what is the process is simple, a filter. Okay, filter actually can filter what we want and filter away what we don't want. So this resonant circuit is used actively in communication system. Okay, for example, in communication system, we always want to select the signal that we want to receive and we want to remove away those that we are not keen to receive. So therefore, a filter is a process that actually separates the one and unwanted signal. In real circuit, true resonance only occurs at discrete and isolate frequency. The impedance of most resonant circuit passes through a sharp minimum or maximum at resonance. The bandwidth of frequency selectivity of such circuit is often defined in terms of the width of this pitch or notch. Okay, so this is another good definition about resonance circuit. So resonance circuit is used to separate the one and unwanted signal. And the frequency actually occur at the discrete and isolate. Okay, this means that over here, later on with a diagram, you can see that the impedance okay, basically changed drastically. Okay, whether at the minimum or maximum at the resonance. Okay, so this is some definition about resonance circuit. Let's move into series and parallel resonance circuit. Let's start out by discuss the series resonator. Okay, the input impedance of a series resonator is given by this equation. Okay, so this is basically, you can see from here, is a R, L, and C. So this is a R. This is the reactance, which is a combination of the L and C. Okay, so you can see over here, okay, we open up this X, okay, which consists of the L term and the C term. Okay, over here, you, by now you should know that this reactance is WL for inductor. 
and for this reactance for capacitor is 1 over Wc. Okay, so this is the whole input impedance of a series resonator. During resonance, okay, which means that these two things actually cancel each other or means that they are actually equals to zero. If you still remember the definition I mentioned on the first page here, during resonance, we only have pure real term and all the imaginary term become a zero. So which means that this reactance of L and reactance of C, they are actually exactly the same. So they cancel each other and this whole term become a zero. Okay, so when this thing become a zero, which means that, as I mentioned earlier on, these two terms become a zero. So once this term become zero, I actually move to the other side. Okay, for example, I move this over here or I move that over there, it's the same. So I actually obtain this equation. Okay, over here, I just want to find my frequency. So over here, I just multiply both sides by the ra radians. Okay, so I multiply here by the radian, I get squared radian squared L, and this radian actually disappeared. And again, I want to find my radian. Here, I just need to move my L to the other side, which I get this equation here. And again, if I want to find my radian, I do a square root. Okay, so this is the square root. And remember, okay, for the radian, is actually 2 pi F. And over here, I can easily find my resonant frequency, which is 1 over 2 pi square root LC. Okay, so this is the resonant frequency of a series resonant. Okay, so over here, I can easily compute the resonant frequency by, if I know my L value and I know my C value, I can easily calculate my resonant frequency. Okay, next, let's move on to the Q. Okay, the Q of a series resonance circuit okay, is defined by this equation. Okay, so this is a series Q. Okay, which means that it's a reactive power over the active power. Reactive power is either the L or C. This active power belongs to the R, which is the resistor. Okay, let's start out by discuss the inductive part. Okay, so again, you can see that this is the Q of a series resonator. Okay, because it's a series resonator, I prefer to use current. Okay, because current throughout the R, L, C, they are exactly the same. So I actually prefer to use this formula to compute my power. Remember for power, okay, I can actually obtain by using this equation. Power equals to I squared R. Can you still remember? So it's the same term here. So this is I squared. This is the reactant, which is also the R term here. You can imagine. But this is the imaginary part. Okay, and the active power is also using this I squared R. Okay, over here, as I told you that since the current is the same, I cancel them off. I actually get this equation. Okay, and this X of a inductor is equals to radian L or 2 pi FL. Okay, so this is the same. So I just want to keep the equation simple. So I use this radian L over R. So therefore, from here, the QS okay, is actually equals to the series reactive over the active part here. Can you see here? So therefore, I can get this equation here. So for series, it's simply the reactive over the resistor, the series resistor. Okay, let's come to the capacity part. Okay, it's the same thing here. So basically, the power is I squared R. Okay, so over here, this is the reactive part of the capacitor. Okay, again, the current is the same. I cancel each other. I get this equation. Okay, and then for the reactive of a capacitor is 1 over Wc. So therefore, I get this equation here. So from here, you can see that for the series resonant, okay, which is the reactive over the real part. Can you see here? So this is the Zs okay, over the Rs. Okay, so this is for the series resonator. Let's come to the parallel resonator. Okay, the input emittance of a parallel resonator is given as this equation. Okay, because they are all arranged in parallel, okay, I can sum them all together. So this is belongs to the real term. Okay, this belongs to the inductor. This belongs to the capacitor. So I add them all together. Okay, so I just want to simplify this. 1 over R, I just use this conductance, which is here. Okay, which over here, 1 over J, which is minus J. 
Okay, and then 1 over minus j, which is positive j. Okay, so basically I, by now you should know how I get this. This is equals to uh, radian L. This xc is equal to 1 over radian c. Okay, so basically this is the formula to compute here. Okay, again for this emittance, okay, it's also applied by this equation here. Okay, so again, you can see over here, I just take a common factor here. So I take this WC here and this minus 1 over WL to reform this equation. Okay, again, during the resonator, okay, if you still remember, okay, I only left the real term, okay, all the imaginary part all go to zero, okay, which means that this is equal to zero, which I did not over here. So I relay the whole part here. I just move this 1 over WL to the other side which I obtain this equation here. Okay, again, I multiply both sides by the radian. Okay, so this radian disappeared. I multiply radian, radian. This term disappeared. So this one is a square. Okay, again, I can find my radian or frequency. Okay, I just move my C onto the other side. So this is the equation. Okay, again, I can easily find my radian, which is 1 over LC, square root LC. So from here, I can also compute that the uh, resonant frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. So this is the resonant frequency for a para-resonator. Okay, you realize that the series and para-resonator, they have the same equation to compute the resonant frequency, okay, which is 1 over 2 pi square root LC. Let's move on to the para-resonator, how to compute the quality factor. Okay, so this is a quality factor for a power resonator. Again, it's the same thing. It's a reactive power over the active power. Let's focus on the inductive. Okay, for a power resonator, I actually prefer to use a V. Okay, because the voltage, all of them is exactly the same. So if you still remember how can we compute power is also another equation, which is V squared over R. Okay, so you can see this is V squared over R. Okay, but this is the reactive part. Okay, but you can imagine that this is V squared over R. Same for this active power here. So from here, I can actually cancel my, my power, my voltage source here, Vs here. So which result on this equation. Okay, you can see that this is 1 over here. So basically, this R shift to the top divided by this is the reactive of the inductor. Okay, again, by now you should know that this reactive of the inductor, which is gradient L, Okay, so which I result in this equation. So therefore, from the parallel Q, okay, which is the parallel resistor over the reactive part. So this is so-called the reverse process of a series resonator. For series, is, if you still remember, it's X, S over R, S. But for parallel, Q of a parallel is actually R, P over X, P. Same wise for capacitor. Okay, so again, capacitor, you can also use this V squared over R equation to compute the power. So this is the reactive power for capacitor. Okay, so this is the active power, which is V squared over R. Again, okay, I don't foresee any issue for you guys to get this equation. Okay, so from here, you can see that this Xc is equal to 1 over radian C. So therefore, I actually obtain this circuit Q as R over Radian C. So from here again, I can also compute that this parallel Q, okay, which is the series, sorry, which is the parallel R over the reactant. Okay, so this is the conclusion on this parallel resonator. Basically, what I want to show is you can see from here the Q factor for parallel resonator is actually RP over XP, okay, either inductor or capacitor. It doesn't different, but for series, okay, you can see over here for series resonator is slightly different. It's actually the reactive part over the series resistor. Okay, I hope this is clear by now. Let's quickly do an example so that everything is all clear. Okay, the figure below shows a resonance circuit. Let L equals to hundred micro Henry, C equals to one hundred picofarad, and resistor is equals to five ohm. Firstly, calculate the resonant frequency. Calculate the circuit Q at resonant and what is the voltage VC at resonant if my Vs is equal to 10 microvolt. 
Okay, so let's start by doing the first, which is the resonant frequency. Okay, remember whether is it series or parallel resonator, they have the same formula. So how I can compute the resonant frequency is you apply this formula, 1 over 2 pi square root LC. I have my L value, I have my C value, so I can compute my resonant frequency as 1.59 megahertz. Okay, let's come to the circuit Q at resonant. Okay, before this, take a look. This is a series resonator. You can see that all the R, L, and C, they are all connected in series. So therefore, I know that this is a series resonator. So therefore, I will apply the series resonator equation, the Q, which is the reactive part over the real part. Okay, you probably now, by now, should know how to calculate this. So either I can use the inductor or the capacitor, no different. You can see that both of them calculate the so-called the circuit Q is exactly at 200. Whether you do it at the L part or you do it at the C is the same. So let's focus on the L part first. Okay, so this is actually WL, okay, radian L, which is equal to 2 pi FL. Okay, I have my resonant frequency, which is 1.59 megahertz. I have my L value. I also have my R value. The L value is 100 microhenry. My R is 5 ohm. So I can compute that the circuit Q is 200. And when I'm actually using the capacitor part to calculate, okay, so this XC is equals to 1 over radian C. Okay, radian is actually equals to 2 pi F. So basically, I relay the formula, this part here. Okay, again, this is 2 pi F0. F0 is 1.59 megahertz. My C value is given in the equation here which is 100 pico. Okay, so this is 100 pico. So I can compute that the Q, circuit Q, using the capacitor part, okay, which also show that it's also 200, which is the same. So either one, you don't need to do two. Either using the inductor or using the capacitor, you will still achieve the same answer. Next, let's focus on the voltage VC. Okay, at resonant, if VS is equal to 10 microvolt, Okay, so at resonant, for example, the source of voltage is equal to 10 microvolt. What is the value of VC over here? Okay, let's do some analysis of the circuit first. Okay, so this VS is equal to I times R. Okay, so this is the total resistor, the input resistor of this series resonator. Okay, remember during the resonant, okay, we only have the real term or the imaginary term equal to zero. So therefore, I actually obtain this equation here. Okay, and I relay my equation, this I, I just move this R over. So it's equals to the voltage divided by R, correct? For series resonator, okay, which means that IC, IL, and IR, they are the same. Okay, you can see that the current actually flow the same path. Okay, there's no increase or decrease of the current. They basically have only one path to flow for a series resonator. So from here, I conclude that they are all the same. So for the voltage at the capacitor, which is the current that flow through the capacitor, multiply the reactive part of the capacitor here. Okay, so this IC, since they are the same, okay, because this I, I have compute here. So basically this part I replaced by IC. So this VS over R multiplied by XC over here. Okay, what I need to do is basically I relay the formula here. Okay, can you see over here? So I just put this Vs alone. So put this Xc over R. Okay, so this is a circuit Q for a series resonator. Can you still remember? Which is the Xc over R, which I have found earlier on, which is 200. Okay, so this is actually 200. And I'm given the source of the voltage, which is 10 microvolt. So from here, I can compute that my VC is equal to 2 millivolt, which means that the supply voltage is 10 microvolt. Okay, when at resonant, I actually achieve a 2 millivolt at the capacitor. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe.